This video covers the basic electrical features in DDS-CAT. To start, we open the ground floor in the electrical discipline. First, we will show you how to insert symbols and objects in the model. The toolbox provides access to the different product databases available. In this case, we want to insert a switch. The product databases in DDS-CAT are structured by categories, which are located on the left. Now select the product flush mounted universal switch and press OK. In the switch dialog, you can change the mounting reference and distance if you like. The object is attached to the mouse cursor and can be dynamically positioned. You can automatically rotate and align an object by using the automatic rotation function. To do so, press and hold Ctrl and move your cursor to a reference line. DDS-CAT automatically generates intelligent snap points 15 cm away from doors. To recognize them, you need to make sure that the snap function is activated. With a left mouse click, you can insert the object in the model. Press Escape to close the function once you are finished inserting objects in the model. Next, we want to insert a socket in the same room. Select the function Socket in the toolbox to open the product database. In this case, select the product flush mounted socket, double horizontal, and press OK. The socket dialog provides similar options as for the switch. If necessary, make changes to the default values, and when done, press OK. As you can see, we can insert the socket exactly at the center of the wall by making use of intelligent snap points. After inserting the socket, press Escape to close the function. Lastly, we will insert a fluorescent lamp in this room. Go to the toolbox and select the function Fluorescent Lamp. Select one of the standard fluorescent button fixtures and press OK. At the reference pull-down list, you have several referencing options for placing the fluorescent lamp. Next to the reference input field, you can toggle whether the distance should be considered from top or bottom. Press OK to insert the object in the model. DDS-CAT offers a variety of inserting objects. In this case, we want to position the lamp exactly in the center of the room. To do so, move your cursor to one of the room corners. Press right mouse button to open the context menu and move your cursor to the menu item from cursor position. Select the option Place Centered between this and the next point. Move the mouse cursor diagonally to the opposite corner of the room and press the left mouse button. Multiple lamps can also be inserted automatically as a group. To show this option, we will first zoom into the room at the top right. As you can see, the lamp function is still active because a symbol is attached to the mouse cursor. Open the context menu by clicking your right mouse button. DDS-CAT offers two different ways of inserting objects in groups, place symmetrical on a surface and on a line. In this case, we select place symmetrical on a surface and select the option select surface. DDS-CAT recognizes the room's surface by highlighting it in a green color. Press left mouse button to create a lamp group. Dialog object group opens and shows details of the group. Plus, it offers options for editing the group. Click OK to close the dialog. To terminate the function, press Escape. DDS-CAT also offers an integrated light calculation according to the efficiency method. For more advanced calculations, DDS-CAT provides bidirectional interfaces to Dialux and Relux. In this introductory video, we will show you the integrated light calculation. Select the function Light Calculation to start the calculation. Next, select the option Pick a Room and press Next. Move your mouse cursor into the room, locate it at the bottom right and press left mouse button. The calculation dialog opens. Here you can define parameters such as the mounting height, working level and luminance. Let's change the luminance to 150 lux and press next. Default values are applied to the lamp type, orientation and mounting type. If required, you can edit these settings and press next to continue. 
Finally, we see the lamp placement, which you can also edit. Press Finish to complete the light calculation for this room and press Escape to close the function. After completing the calculation, you can generate a calculation report. To do so, select the lamp in a group with left mouse button and open the context menu with right mouse button. Next, select the option Edit Group. In the Calculation dialog, click on the Reports button. In the Report Manager, you can select the checkbox at Light Calculation. To go to the next page, press the arrow to the right. The calculation report can be exported to either PDF or other formats such as Excel or Word. In the render mode, you can make a light simulation with the lamps you have inserted in the model. But first, we have to activate the light simulation option for the lamps. Select one of the lamps with left mouse button and start the function Find and Edit Objects. Click on the button Add Same in Model. Next, click on the Edit button. In the Fluorescent Lamp dialog, you can activate the Render Light On checkbox. Press OK and press Close. Activate the Render Mode to view the model in 3D. In this example, the rendered simulation was previously generated. However, to perform the light simulation, position the model as you wish and click on the Render Ray Tracing Advanced function. Now we will start with designing some cable management systems. To do so, change the working mode to Cable Management Systems. In the toolbox you will find functions for conduits, cable ducts and cable ladders. Click on the cable ladder function, move the cursor to the right side of the hole and left click to set the start point of the cable ladder. In the dialog you configure the start from, with, mounting height and more. After defining the correct settings, click OK. Move the mouse cursor to draw the segment and press left mouse button to change the direction and insert bands. To end the cable tray, left click at the endpoint and press escape to close the function. You can automatically insert fittings such as reducers and tees after the cable tray is defined. Select the reducer function and move the cursor to the position where you want to insert the fitting. DDS-CAT automatically recognizes the cable tray, however make sure that SmartSnap is activated to do so. In the dialog you can configure the reducer like the eccentric and the exit width, when finished press OK. You can continue inserting reducers or press escape to close the function. Now we will create a distribution board and define some circuits. First go back to the default working mode. Select the function distribution board. Next, click on the button New Board and enter a name for the distribution board in the Name field. Click on the triple dots button to open the product database. In this case we open the category Distribution Board and select the second product in the list. Next, select the Circuits List tab. Here we can define new circuits for this distribution board. To do so, click on the New button. The first circuit we want to define is the power supply, so select the category supply slash generator and subsequently select the subcategory supply with protective device with cable. Next we predefine the main load to 63 amperes and you can change the modification factor to 80%. Next click on the add button to open the product database for electrical components. Based on the settings we applied, DDS-CAT suggests an appropriate fuse, select it and press OK. Here you can select the system configuration in relation to neutral and earth. To proceed, press OK. At last, you can give a description to the circuit and click OK. Next, select the category level 2 protective device on busbar and the first subcategory. You can change the load to 25 amperes and the modification factor to 100% and click Add. 
Again, DDS CAT suggests the views. Click OK. Give a name to the circuit and click OK once more. At last, we will define a circuit for the lighting. Select the category insulation and the first subcategory below. Change the load to 16 amperes and click Add. Select an appropriate MCB fuse breaker and click OK. Give a name to the circuit and click OK and click Close to view the circuit list. The light circuit can be easily copied by using the shortcuts Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Switch to the tab Define Board to insert the distribution board in the model. To do so, click on the button Place Symbol. Position the board against the bottom wall of the hall. To perfectly align it, press and hold the Ctrl key and move your cursor against the wall. With a left click, you insert the distribution board at the cursor position. Press Escape key to close the function. In the next steps, we will connect a lighting circuit to the distribution board by using the root of the cable tray. But first, we activate the circuit list as a user interface element. Move the cursor to the bottom of the user interface, right mouse click and select the option Distribution Board Circuit List. This way, we can view the circuit list while we define the cabling. Next, zoom in to the bottom right room. To start drawing the circuit, select circuit number 3. Right mouse click to open the context menu and select the option Draw Circuit. In this dialog, we can configure the cable and check the conduit checkbox. Click OK to start drawing the cable. In this case, we start the cable from a point leaving the cable tray. Make sure that the function SmartSnap is activated. DDSCAT asks you if you want to create a cable trunk on the cable tray. Click Yes. Now draw the cable and connect it to the lamps and switch with a left mouse click. To close the function, press Escape. When taking a look at circuit 3 in the list, we can see that the symbol in the column connected is partially filled with yellow. This means that the circuit is not connected to the distribution board yet. Activate the cable trunk function. Select the checkbox conduit and click OK. We start the cable trunk from the cable tray in front of the distribution board and draw the trunk towards it. Before we connect the trunk to the board, we position it to the center of the board. If required, you can turn off SmartSnap by pressing the number 3 on your keyboard. After fixing the trunk at the center, turn SmartSnap on again and click to connect once the distribution board is highlighted. Press Escape to close the function. Here we have also drawn the cable for circuit 4 in the room above in order to demonstrate that multiple circuits can pass through a single cable trunk. Activate Cable Trunk Label in the toolbox. In the dialog you select the information you want to display and click OK. Select the cable trunk at a position where you want to insert a label, move the line and click once more to create the label. You can also add labels to single cables. As you can see, circuits 3 and 4 are passing through the cable tray at the position where the cables leave the cable tray, a conduit of 25 mm is applied. To conclude the modeling, we insert some emergency lights in the floor above and connect to circuit 5. To do so, open the project manager and select the first floor level 2 and click open. Click on the lamps function in the toolbox. Open the category emergency and safety lights and select the product emergency light standby. Click OK once more in this dialog. The object can be rotated using the shortcut Ctrl Shift left mouse button and position the emergency light in front of the door in the hall. 
open the context menu and select the option Properties. Next, click on the triple dots button to open the product database. Select the product Emergency Light Lamp Permanent and click OK. Again, click OK in the dialog. Rotate the object so that the arrow is pointing upwards and insert it by clicking left mouse button. Once again, open the context menu, select properties and click on the open product database. Now select the instruction lamp stairs and click on OK. And click OK once more in this dialog. Rotate the object to have the arrow pointing to the staircase and click left mouse button to insert the object into the model. Next, open the ground floor again via the Explorer. We will draw circuit 5 from the distribution board to connect the lamps in the story above. To do so, open the circuit list, select circuit 5 and choose the option Draw Circuit from the context menu. Select the conduit checkbox and click OK. Move the cursor to the board and left click once it is highlighted. We will connect the cable at the back side of the distribution board and next we draw a small segment of the cable inside the wall and open the context menu with right mouse click. We select the option End in Story Above. DDSCAD creates a story port from which you can automatically continue drawing in the cable in the story above it. Select the story port, right click and select the option Open Story Model and Zoom to Story Port. Again, select and right click the story port. Select the option Continue Cable from Story Below. Before we draw the cable horizontally, you can press Page Up on your keyboard. In the field Absolute Z position, enter 2.5 meters and press OK. Now you can draw the cable and connect it to the emergency lamps. When finished, press Escape to close the function. DDSCAD provides the possibility to create system diagrams automatically. To do so, activate the tab Systems. Click Open the Emergency Lighting System tree, select the board and open the context menu with a right mouse click. Select the option Generate Schema. Click Yes to save unsafe documents in the project. Click OK to automatically create a system diagram. DDSCAD automatically displays the diagram in which we see the lamps connected to the board with a reference to the story, circuit and room. Finally, we will generate electrical diagrams of the distribution board. First, save all open files. Next, open the project manager and select the model electrical schematic. Activate the distribution board function in the schematic toolbox. Select the board that we defined earlier on from the pull down list and select the sheets tab. Expand the tree structure for single diagram and double click the single diagram option. Do the same for the multi main diagram, double click the first option and click OK. By clicking on the function draw circuits, DDSCAD will automatically generate the electrical diagrams. Here you see the single line diagram with the fuses we defined previously. Below we see a description of the circuits updated with the current load, cable length and more. By pressing the right arrow we move to the next page. Again select the function draw circuits and the multi-line diagram is automatically generated as well. In this case we see the circuits including respective faces and connection to the neutral and earth.